Okay, I'd like to introduce Dr. Abdul Qadr, who is joined me on the quality team to lead our efforts to modify and implement uh, the work that was started by Dr. Reddy and Dr. Boating on uh, cabbage pathways. Good morning, everyone. My name is Fatma Abdel Qadr. I'm the performance improvement coordinator at the department. Now I'm going to give you a presentation about ERAS, which is gaining popularity in surgery around the world. It stands for Enhanced Recovery After Surgery. So let's begin with the defin definition of ERAS. ERAS is a multimodal, multidisciplinary, perioperative approach to patients to achieve early recovery from surgery, uh, especially major surgeries. Enhanced recovery um, addresses the patient journey from the start in the doctor office or inpatient until discharge. In the WATS last year in, in San Diego, uh, there was a dedicated session as regard ERAS in cardiac surgery. And it came with the first ever consensus recommendations, as you see here, with different level of evidences. And if you have a look at the program of the WATS next um, in May, you will find some sessions talking about ERAS perioperative in cardiac surgery. So why ERAS in cardiac surgery? There is a financial burden around the expenditure in cardiac surgery, as well as the increase in patient expectations, complexity in our cases, growing elderly population, making cardiac patients ideal cohort for application of ERAS. There, there have been clinical trials that shown that well-designed and well-implemented ERAS protocol can assist in achieving good outcomes with less complications, less length of stay, and less cost, with improved patient satisfaction. ERAS will help us standardize our order sets to eliminate any variability in our practice, as well as spread the best practices <coughs> as possible. So as you see in this slide, it's, it shows us the different components in ERAS, which includes three main bundles. The first is preoperative, from the patient referral until the operating room, intraoperative components, and postoperative components. So here I'm going to highlight the most important con components in each pillar. In preoperative interventions, we will start by educating the patient and the family as regard the disease, the disease about the, the hospital course, as well as the expectations in the hospital and the expected length of stay, so that the patient will prepare himself very well before surgery and expect what's going to happen after that. The second important recommendation is assessment and optimization of any comorbidities before surgery. For, for example, if the patient having anemia, we have to correct it before surgery by supplementing the patient with iron or even uh, getting a hematology consult before surgery to reduce blood transfusions afterward. And if the patient having high hemoglobin A1C, we can refer to endocrinology to help us optimize the patient very well before surgery. Uh, for sure, we have to start incentive spirometry training to decrease post-operative uh, pulmonary complications and make the patient in the best shape before surgery. At the day of surgery, the patient will be NPO after midnight, which is the same like what we are doing, but except for a carbohydrate, clear liquid loading two hours preoperatively. And the other thing that's new to the practice is initiation of multimodal opioid analgesia before surgery by giving the patient uh, one oral dose of acetaminophen and or gabapentin before induction of anesthesia. The intraoperative interventions, which will be provided by our surgical and anesthesia team, will include fast-track cardiac anesthesia protocol, lung protective ventilation, blood conservation strategies, and we will continue the multimodal opioid sparing analgesia, maintaining normothermia and tight glycemic control as per, per, as per protocol, and we will initiate the post-operative nausea and vomiting prophylaxis in the operating room by giving the patient one intravenous dose of ondacitrin um, before the end of surgery. And Extubation of the patient, if possible, on table. Rigid external fixation, as indicated in certain patients, to reduce 
the wound infection later on and give the patient more, um, more ability to move around and less pain. Post-operative intervention will include early extubation if the patient is not extubated in the OR. And we will continue again the multimodal opioid sparing analgesia. We will reserve the use of um, opioid for the cases of moderate to severe pain. And we would prefer oral versus intravenous um, way. We will continue the post-operative nausea vomiting prophylaxis for the first post-operative <coughs> two days. And we will encourage the patient to move from post-operative day zero, as well as early oral nutrition. And for sure, early removal of any drains and catheters and delorium screening in the ICU at least once per nursing shift. And early discharge planning. For ERAS protocol to be implemented, it can't be done except with good auditing for the compliance and the outcomes of application of our ERAS program. So what are our target patient population here? We will start working in our cabbage patients. Um, the candidates will be identified and assigned for the pathway preoperatively in the clinic or inpatient. Our exclusion criteria will be uh, high-risk patients and urgent emergent cabbage patients. So as you see here, we will integrate the ERAS components after agreement of our faculty and the anesthesia team to our already existing cabbage pathway that Dr. Percy and Dr. Reddy and many others have worked um, on it. To summarize, ERAS pathway in cabbage entails multidisciplinary team participation, which will include surgeons, anesthesia, intensivists, and nursing as well. We have to agree on a standardized order set and we will create an APEC pathway to integrate it into our system so it will be easy to audit the outcomes and the compliance to it. Thank you.